Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about um, floating balance wheel clocks. They are called floating balance wheels because they literally float. Boop, boop, boop. Um, floating balance wheels was an invention by the brand Hermler in the 1950s because they wanted uh, to make a clock that was less susceptible to placement because um, before that most um, mantle clocks this is a movement that was would have been used in a mantle clock if they were placed a little bit at an angle they would stop working um, because they had a pendulum inside and this uses a balance wheel so a totally different kind of escapement and um, yeah, so you can put this on a slight angle and it will still work. Uh, of course, if I go to extreme, then it will eventually stop. You see it's slowing down right now. But yeah, you can imagine if I would put a clock at an angle like this, well, who would do that, to be honest? If you have is that crooked, um, yeah, it's time to move. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's basically the the balance wheel is held um, in height wise just by the hairspring. So you can see the hairspring here, um, and the whole um, <clears throat> balance. Um, is suspended actually, not, not really suspended, but held in place by a little string on top. So there's a a metal, like a little metal wire that goes from um, top to bottom, which um, you can see in the middle here you have a small pipe. Um, it's a brass pipe. In expensive versions, um, in the small pipe there are two jewels. Um, that hold the um, the hold the pipe in place, like around the wire actually. Um, so the um, <clears throat> the balance wheel would stay in place more or less. Um, but um, I think in this version um, and probably most of the versions, they just used a very hard steel. Um, like steel, uh, like a tiny steel block that uh, was placed inside the tube to hold it um, in position. Um, so basically, except um, when it is sticking, um, the balance wheel is actually moving almost freely, um, which is a great advantage. You can see it makes a lot of amplitude. Um, and yeah, it, it has the ability to um, take out the user out of the equation um, for a bit. There's still things you can do wrong with clocks like this. Um, in this case, um, it's, um, it is a Westminster movement, um, but they also just made them in simple uh, chime movements. Um, and um yeah um that's about it for just globally showing it um i'm going to show it in a bit more detail um which i'm going to um reposition the camera a bit but for now um since you've all liked guessing um in one of the latest videos i did i'm going to leave you with another guess um, you can see that the hairspring is actually um, made out of two sections. You can see from here to here, and then there's a gap, and from here to here. Basically, um, the bottom part um, and the top part, um, the spiral is round in the opposite direction. Um, and they are just joined in the middle by like uh, a U-turn. 
Um, and um, my get my question for you today is why do you think they did that? Uh, I'm going to leave you well a few a few moments to guess, um, and then um, yeah, I will tell you. So think about it. Why would they have done that? And um, like last time. Well, let me know in the comment section if you guessed it right. So, you had your time to guess. Um, so, yeah, it's time to find out if you guessed correctly or not. Um, the reason um, they are round in two different directions, and I don't know if it shows up on camera, but if you would just do one spiral, then while um, moving left to right, um, you would have get a movement up and down, because in one direction you are winding the spiral tighter so it would go up and if you go in the other direction you would unwind it so you would go down but by having two spirals who are opposite to each other then the one is um, winding up and the other is winding down um, so basically they cancel each other out that's why you can see here um, it just stays in place. So yeah, and then there's another um, odd thing about it, and that is how do you regulate a clock like this? How do you regulate um, a floating balance wheel? Well, there are two ways of adjusting it, and um, I'm going to show a broad way of it now and then once we zoom in later on on the uh, escapement itself I will show you it in more detail but you can see there's a plus uh, a minus and a plus here um, on the faceplate um, and um, basically the way you adjust it is you hold you hold it here and you can so you can see uh, that small lip so if I um, would um, if I would want to have it go um, faster then I would turn it that way slower I would turn it that way um, and that's the fine adjustment and you can see there are small holes um, basically that's a factory adjustment um, you would um, punch those holes through and then um, vary the weight of the balance wheel um, and uh, that's the like um, gross adjustment um, in the factory and also if during the lifetime of this clock the uh, fine adjustment um, would run out so there's a certain range and if you are at the end of that range you can um, punch the holes out after and there is um, a special way of doing it I will show that at the end of the video in a diagram um, but yeah um, now that I explained that um, I'm going to um, set up the camera a bit different probably zoom a bit more in on the escapement itself and then we can I can show you um, those adjustments because the way it adjusts is um, that there are weights on there I don't know I can probably show them like this yes there are small weights on there and the way you regulate the fine adjustment is if you turn this ring opposite um, to this ring with the lips um, then you move those weights in or out um, basically you are um, if you have the weights on the um, in the middle 
um, they won't have as much as effect um, to, towards while they are on the outside. But yeah, let's refocus the camera. So yeah, now I'm zoomed in um, completely on the escapement. So you can see here, it's just, you can see here the Ansher wheel, the Ansher. And then you can see here, you can see the holes. So those um, are the ones that are punched out and those are not punched out. Um, and then you, here you can see the weight really, really well. And you can even see the, the guide reels um, here at the back that make them go um, in and out. So yeah, I'm going to now um, tilt the clock um, and then um, I'm going to try to show you some more. So yeah, here you can see those uh, guard rails, um, the tiny weights um, and like the punch titles even better. Of course, in this position I can't really let the clock work because um, it's completely um, resting on the wire while it would be normally almost free. Um, but yeah, it gives you another good look um, to those regulating mechanisms. Um, but yeah, um, that's about it for the real life videos and then we'll hop on the computer and I will show you um, the diagrams on how to regulate this and how it influences it like how everything influences it um yeah so let's take a look at these two documents so the first one is a document um that is um basically really good in showing what's going on for wheel so you can see here um the bracket wasn't on the clock we um which I showed earlier, but for the rest you can see the cold hair spring here, then then um, the balance wheel itself, um, and then the pallets. So here you can see what I couldn't really show, uh, which is how the pallet fork and the uh, pins actually interact with each other. You can see it's a safety waller, and you can see here the guard pin here, can see the wire that goes through the whole thing but basically what this is for is even if you would check the clock that it that the balance could never get into a position that would um, constrain operation so basically um, if the pallet is all the way to the left to the right and you would shake it you could get it into a position that the clock no longer works if it would not be for this guard pin here. Uh, for the rest, this document has a lot of text in it, but I'm switching to another one. Um, you can see here the diagrams are a bit too coarse to really um, see. Like for this, all those angles are great if you want to troubleshoot something, but that's not really uh, what we are after. I just wanted to show you this. So this shows um, how to regulate um, the like course. Um, so you you can see here um, on the inside where there's less influences you are. Each hole you punch out is twenty seconds a day, but the further you go out, like in the outer ring, you are adding three and a half minutes. Another thing is. Um, is that you have to do it in pairs. So, for example, if you would punch out this one, you need to punch out this one. You can also add weight, depending on if you need to go uh, before or behind. Um, you can also add weight. So, if you would add a small weight here, you need to add one here to keep it in balance. But, yeah, uh, that was what I wanted to show about the floating... Um, balance wheel clocks um, they are really interesting they are a bit um, like they are a bit outdated um, I don't think there are new clocks made with those but they are still really cool to take a look at
bye bye everyone. I hope you liked the video. See you in the next one.